up on Eagle Vision News, we'll take you inside the new dorm and show you what's cooking. And new school year, new parking complications on campus. We'll show you what to expect. All this and more on Eagle Vision News. And welcome to Eagle Vision News. I'm Clark Finney. And I'm Carrie Casey. Our top story tonight, multiple fires rage in Northern California counties, evacuating thousands of residents and destroying hundreds of structures. Three major blazes in these counties have burned more than 270,000 acres so far. One person has died and at least four firefighters have severe burns from battling these blazes that are mostly out of control. Governor Jerry Brown declared a state of emergency as these fires burned blocks of apartment complexes, barns, and homes. Fire officials do not see an end to this fire season because this drought-stricken state is so parched. Two LAX commercial airplanes clipped each other on the runway Sunday night. Los Angeles officials say that the two planes carrying over 100 passengers and crew members skimmed each other on the tarmac when their wings collided. The United Airlines plane was pulling into the gate while the Alaskan Airlines plane was preparing to take off. The collision caused both planes to be stuck together, and travelers were instructed to stay on board until the planes were safely detached. The Federal Aviation Administration and the National Transportation Safety Board are planning to investigate the incident further. No one was reportedly injured. And if you think flying is risky, you might want to take a look down at your own plate. Sodium has recently been linked with elevated blood pressure and heart disease by the American Heart Association. And New Yorkers are about to experience the first wave of mandatory warning labels from some of their favorite eateries. Thanks to ruling by the city's Board of Health, restaurants like Applebee's and TGI Fridays will be required to label food items on their menu that contain more than a day's worth of sodium. 2,300 milligrams is the recorded daily limit of salt intake, but that amount can easily be found in just one meal from the average chain restaurant. The new regulation being enforced in New York City is expected to go nationwide. President Obama has increased the number of Syrian refugees allowed to resettle in the U.S. in the next year from 5,000 to 10,000. As masses of people are displaced by civil war in their own home country, the U.S. is joining Europe in response to this humanitarian crisis. Obama is getting some criticism from human rights activists saying that America has a responsibility to take in hundreds of thousands more refugees in the next year. On the other side of the issue, ISIS is a huge concern for other U.S. officials who worry extremists could gain access to the U.S. through this refugee crisis. And just days after special needs student Paul Lee was found dead on a school bus in Whittier, his family has received over $40,000 from community support. All donations will help defray funeral costs for 19-year-old Paul John Lee. He died last Friday after being left on a bus for over nine hours in triple-digit heat wave. His heartbroken family reached out to the community for financial help and set a goal of fundraising $10,000 on their GoFundMe page, but they've since more than quadrupled their goal. While Paul's family mourns, officials have not yet determined the cause of death. And our thoughts and prayers are with the Lee family as they grapple with this tragedy. Campus Safety recently sent out a school-wide email regarding a lockdown training exercise that will be conducted next week. On September 29th, between 8 a.m. and 12 p.m., no students will be able to enter or leave the premises. As precaution for a potential threat, Biola University's Campus Safety has partnered with the on-campus emergency response team as well as the La Mirada Sheriff Station to conduct the drill. The exercise will be initiated by an alarm from the university's main emergency notification system, and students and campus staff can also receive text messages of the alert by putting their cell phone numbers in the secure database provided in the email. The lockdown is expected to last between 15 to 20 minutes and will be concluded by a follow-up text message. After all the construction on campus, Biola's newest storm is up and running. Reporter James O'Hearn takes us inside. Biola's new dorm on campus, Blackstone Hall, is home to more than 320 students this year. Located directly across from Sigma in Upper Campus, the dorm is four stories tall and has 132 rooms. I'm standing here in front of the newly constructed Blackstone Hall, first dormitory on campus to have a cafeteria. The residents seem overall happy with the white and green walls having replaced Horton as the newest dorm on campus. Some of the facilities available at Blackstone include a deck for students to relax and study on, as well as two brand new kitchen areas. Each floor has three flat screen TVs, which include streaming services such as Hulu and Netflix. The new dorm is great. It's, the facilities are super nice. 
rooms are a little small, but the facilities are really nice and soft. It's our Rooms in Blackstone Hall are $2,300 a semester, making it the cheapest dorm to live in on campus. Most of the rooms are also about 30% smaller than the average dorm room at Viola. I think the rooms are small but doable. We still have a couch in ours and it works. Uh, and the RAs, all I've met, they've all, I've met them all and they're all really, really nice. And um, ma they're making a great community for Blackstone. I think that they're doing a great job at making um, a new community for a new dorm and, and just setting the tone. You know, you make do with what you get, and it's nice that you can put couches in the extra large rooms, so those are usually used for the hangouts. Blackstone is yet another way Biola has been expanding for the future generation of students. This has been James O'Hearn, Eagle Vision News. Blackstone also has a full breakfast cafe. Reporter Kara Ramey has a story. Blackstone Hall is the newest dorm on Biola's campus, but what many students don't know is that there's a new cafe right outside. Blackstone Cafe is the newest addition to Biola's campus, serving everything from coffee and Belgian waffles to gourmet breakfast sandwiches. So we wanted to provide breakfast all day so the students could come as they, as they wanted to. If they wanted to get breakfast at like 3 o'clock in the afternoon, they wouldn't have to like, um, obviously like go to Eagles because they don't serve breakfast at that time. And so we wanted to do something different that no other place on campus has. Blackstone Cafe offers a variety of food unlike anything else on campus. The menu includes unique items like creme brulee waffles, breakfast sandwiches, and specialty drinks. I got a, this like waffle thing with fried chicken on it and slaw. Did you like it? It was super good. Probably not the healthiest thing, but it was delicious. Students can stop by to pick up a quick snack to go or sit and enjoy a gourmet breakfast with friends. It was really good, actually. Yeah. Do you plan to go back? Mm -hmm. I'd go back for sure. So you've only been there once? Yeah, I went there once, but it's like really convenient, so yeah. I'll probably go again. This is Kara Ramey reporting for Eagle Vision News. Jasmine Rose joins us today to give an update on crime in America. Jasmine? San Antonio High School is making national news after two football players were caught on video tackling a referee earlier this month. The video went viral and exposes the players' hits as intentional. As to what prompted the boys is still under investigation. Assistant coach Mac Breed was put on administrative leave after allegations broke that he influenced boys by stating, the ref should pay for cheating us. The two players also accused referee Robert Watts of making racial slurs causing them to react. Watts denies all accusations, describing them as slander. The two boys, a sophomore and a senior of John Jay High School, have been removed from the team and ultimately expelled. No arrests have currently been made. Investigators in Easton, Connecticut uncovered a new lead on their case of a couple reported missing last month. Jeffrey and Jeanette Navin were last seen on August 4th. Last Tuesday's son, Kyle Navin, was arrested and charged with illegal possession of firearms. During a raid at his home, police found a receipt from Home Depot dated August 5th, showing Navin bought bleach, stain remover, and cleanup bags. Police also discovered frantic text messages on Kyle's phone sent by Jeffrey on the last day he was seen. I'm not going home until I know mom is okay. Did you hurt mom? This new evidence dismisses Kyle's early claims of innocence and makes him a person of interest. Authorities are now urging drivers to be on the alert when taking the Interstate 10 freeway en route to Phoenix. Arizona state troopers recently confirmed 11 shootings on the I-10 within a time frame of two weeks. The first shooting was reported in late August and spanned throughout September. 19-year-old Oscar de la Torre Munoz was identified as a person of interest on Friday after being taken in for questioning and arrested on unrelated charges. Police dismissed the idea of a single sniper and considered the possibilities of a shooter in August followed by copycats. Investigators are still open to new leads regarding this case. A $20,000 reward will be given for any information that would lead to an arrest. Thank you for the update, Jasmine. Great having you on. Yeah. A new school year means new parking challenges. Reporter Jared Hardy takes us to Biola Avenue for a closer look. I'm here on Biola Avenue, where recently yards of curb were painted red in an attempt by campus safety to regulate student parking in residential areas. Previously, commuters used to be able to park all along Biola Avenue. However, now there's a lot less elbow room. According to Brian Phillips, Senior Director of Facilities Management, several of the red curb areas near the driveway entrances along Biola Avenue were extended to improve visibility as vehicles enter and exit the campus. 
Updated parking rules and procedures also allowed for a revamp of the campus parking system. First of all, the old system was difficult for students. Uh, it was difficult to manage. It was difficult for our IT department to support this. The system was decades old that we were using. It didn't even talk to other computer systems on campus. It did not work um, nearly as well. When we, every other system on campus has been upgraded. Uh, this was kind of the, one of the one of the last holdouts to be upgraded. So it was it was long overdue to be done, and we're glad it finally finally was able to happen. For Eagle Vision News, this is Jared Hardy. So I was on Facebook this morning, mm -hmm. and of course, a video from BuzzFeed pops up on my news feed, yeah, of course. and it's hilarious. Um, we're definitely not used to rain out here for some reason. Like we we get bullied by other states, and they think that we're wimps. And uh, I think this video is absolutely hysterical, and it just yeah. shows, um, well, let me just let you guys check it out for yourselves. It's happening. So that video was pretty dramatic, yeah. but I can attest that it's pretty accurate to how Californians react to a little bit of rain, mm -hmm. let's be honest. Let's be honest, and it's funny because it's true. I mean, Californians do not, or at least Los Angeles people, I'm a native, and I feel like I know how to drive, but whenever there's rain or water falling from the sky, it's like the apocalypse. But yeah, traffic jams everywhere. Yeah. People go slower. It's just a hot mess. It and really we have is. it pretty good in California. We, we pretty much do. Um, we really don't have very much to complain about at all, actually. Let's take a look at the weather for this week and see if the apocalypse will continue or if we have sunny skies in our future. Josh, how are we looking over there? Thank you, Clark and Carrie. Behind me right now, we have the Los Angeles River. It's usually bone dry, but it's not today. Very moist, very damp because of the two inches of rain we gratefully received. Let's go on to the, the daily forecast. This morning, it was great, very easy going. We could get ready without breaking a sweat. I know I did. It got a little warmer, but not as warm as we're used to, thank God, and it went right back down into the mid-60s. We have the door open right now, and everyone's quite comfortable. Let's go to the satellites. And now, as we can see, the storm went all the way through, went east, but it did leave us some damp deposits earlier on today, and we're very grateful for that. Let's go on to the weekly forecast. Wednesday, tomorrow, going to get warmer. Thursday, even warmer still. Friday, we keep going up, keep getting warmer. Hopefully, it'll go back down to what it was today, but if not, it's California, so we take the good with the bad. Back to you, Clark and Carrie. Thank you so much for that enlightening forecast, Josh Claussen. And that's actually all we have for you today. But coming up next week, we'll take a look at new vaping laws and what students have to say. And how is Biola coping with the drought? Keep up with us during the week. Like our Facebook page, Biola Eagle Vision, and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Biola EV. We'll see you next time. <laughs>